Hi, in this brief video, I'm going to show you two methods of swapping clips in Resolve's timeline. The old switcheroo, as they say. In this Resolve project, we have a couple of different media elements in our timeline here. We're going to look at this still frame here, first of all. We can see it's a musical score, and by looking at our inspector here, we can see it's been zoomed in by 1.910, and its X position is currently at 870, and this orange diamond tells us that it's been keyframed. When we hit the next keyframe control, we can see the X position is what's getting animated with the keyframes. So when I play this, we can see it's scrolling the musical score along like that. Now let's say that I've decided that a musical score only appeals to musicians and I want something that appeals to anybody who might be interested in music. So I have this keyboard up here in the source viewer. This keyboard image is the exact same resolution and size as the score image. So that's one of the reasons why this is going to work really well for us. Although it doesn't have to be the exact same size and resolution. If it's not, you might have to adjust some things after you do the swap. But in our instance here, we're not going to have to adjust anything. It's going to match perfectly. So we can do what's called replace clip. As you can see, we have a button on our toolbar here that we can use, or I can press F11. Alternatively, I can drag this over the Timeline Viewer and choose Replace. I make sure the clip and the timeline is selected, and the playhead is at the start of the clip to be replaced. So let's do that real quick. We select Replace, and there it is. It's replaced it. It's also zoomed the same amount. Its position on the X has also been changed to the same amount. We have a keyframe. Go to this end and we can see the keyframe again is animating the X position. So we can hit the space bar and play it and there it is. It inherited all of those attributes from the original clip and that's what's going to happen whenever you use this replace function. Now the playhead's position is important here. I'm going to undo what we've done and I'm going to place the playhead right here. Now at this point, the replace function is going to use the playhead to determine where to start the replace. So when I drag this over to here and I say replace, it's going to replace from the playhead to the end of the clip. Additionally, this doesn't have to be a still. It could be a regular video clip that we're doing this with. I'm going to undo that. One of the characteristics of the replace function is that it'll replace with whatever you've got up here in the source viewer, regardless of its duration. It will match the duration of the clip that's in the timeline. So if you've got clips that are extending out to the right, it's not going to impact those in any way. It's going to do an exact replacement of the exact same time within this element here. If I was using video clips and the clip I was doing the replace with was longer than the clip in the timeline, it will trim the clip to the length of the one in the timeline. If the clip is too short, it will create a gap. Now let's do a different kind of swap. Over here on our video clip, we have a clip of some people who are clearly being surveilled out on a beach. The audience is wondering, okay, who's surveilling them? Then we reveal it's a CIA operative who's got their camera out and they're taking pictures of these people. Well, let's say from a narrative standpoint, I want to show the CIA operative first and then show the audience what the CIA operative is surveilling. So I want to swap these two clips and I can do that by selecting one of the clips and pressing shift plus control for Windows or command on the Mac and comma and that will switch those two clips for me just like that. Now we have the CIA operative first and the audience is now curious as to who she's surveilling and then I show the surveillance subjects like this. Now let's say I want to go back. I've changed my mind. Leaving the clip selected, I do the shift plus control for Windows or command on the Mac and period. So period and comma let me go back and forth with this swap. This also works with a gap. You can see we have a gap here. What if I wanted to move the clip over and shift that gap over to the other side of the clip? Well, I can do that here with shift plus control for Windows or command on the Mac and comma. And now that gap has moved over to the other side. Note that the clip that's going to be affected by this is selected. If I select this clip here and I hit shift plus control for Windows or command on the Mac, 
Mac plus period, nothing will happen because there's nowhere to go to the right. There is somewhere to go to the left. So if I hit shift plus control for Windows or command on the Mac plus comma, it goes to the left. Now, if the gap over here was selected, no amount of our hotkey plus comma or period will have any effect on anything. The gap is not considered a clip that is selected. I thought since we're moving clips around, I'll give you another quick tip here, and that is if we select a clip and we hold down Alt on Windows or Option on the Mac and then up arrow, it will create a new video track and move the current selected clip directly up without moving it left or right. You can continue to move it up and create more video tracks as you can see here. I now have seven of them. If I hold down the same hotkey going down, it will go down, but it will not eliminate the tracks that were created. Right mouse clicking in the track header region to get the context menu there, I'll do a delete empty tracks to get rid of those. Another way to move the clip up or down is with shift and the left mouse button to drag it up or down. Doing so locks the clip vertically so you can't move it left or right and change the timing. So you're guaranteed to maintain your timing. You can only drag it up one track at a time. It won't let you do more than one. If you want to do more than one with this technique, you'll have to let go of the shift and the mouse button and repeat shift plus left mouse button and drag. Now, if I let go and I hold down again, I can go up another track. Again, when I come down, it's not getting rid of these tracks that were created over here. I'll nuke those with the right mouse click in the header area and say delete empty tracks again. So there you have it, the old switcheroo. I hope this helps someone out there. If you like the video, please click like. That helps other folks find it. And until the next video, take care.